do what we were working on, we'll add, we'll subtract, we'll change the pattern. This is kind of left off, all right? We had, in the last class, I'm gonna ask them to lay down, but if you, uh, people that weren't here, sit up for one second. This happens all the time. I'm like this, we're clapping, and I'll come in here like this. I'll ask them to lay down again. This is exactly where my hands were. You'll see that stance, and you'll do it one more time. Come in here. We're like this, we just clap hands, or this is a live set, and I'm like this. Lay back down. Exactly like that. So it's just not random that I'm just picking this position. That position happens every round, every round. I will say something. Um, at some point, right, I think BJJ is so reflective of life. You got to take chances. And who cares if you fail? I feel like, the, like every failure I ever had in my life was the greatest learning experience. I, I would, if you said, do it again, give me that failure again, baby. Give me this failure again. So the reason I bring it up is I think BJJ mirrors life so much. And there's some people, I'm not going to say who, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ask you, are you that one? Maybe you are, maybe you're not. Where I've seen, I've been going over this, and they put their hands here like this, right? And they got their hands on inside position. They'll go like this, right? Or they'll go like this. They'll do everything opposite of taking the chance and going, let me work that move. I give, uh, I'm going to do a shout out to Ezekiel. Uh, Zeke, literally, like, you show him something, he's going to try it. He's going to try it. Like, he thinks I watch him. And I go, man, he's going to try it. Like, I know he is. And sometimes it'll be, he'll incorporate it. And sometimes, as I say with everything, and you're the artist. So you may want to use that, that color, and maybe you don't, but you're going to try it. So try, right? Mirror's life, man. Says a lot about how you, how you conduct yourself outside, too. You're like this. Not in a negative way. It's just I'm trying to tell you to growth is important in all aspects. You're like this. You just touch, right? You're here, right? And this is what I said before. I said that you were gonna, if you back for about two weeks, if we had inside position, I would love to release this hook. And I went like this, I went, and I flared, and I dropped my knee two behind one, and then we went through a whole series of getting in front of this thigh. I went like this, I caught in front of the thigh, I'm two behind one, I went over this kneecap like this, I collected this kneecap, I turned this hip, and now I've passed, right? That's what I did. And then I showed a variation over the last few months. We had inside position. I had a touch in here. Same thing. Remember when I go, we had an opportunity. And we've come up like this, right? I'm like this. And now I've made this, uh, I made this flare like this. And I've just dropped this. And I'm coming forward. And he knows, so he shrimps. And he brings this leg up. And now we've brought our kneecap in and we've fallen into a heel hook. That heel hook, a uh, no, bunch of the young men, I showed that heel hook and you collect it, and then they saw it, Cola Bate, and somebody else sent me one the other day. Who was it? My oh, you did, George. Who was the other guy that did it? Uh, I just saw Cole do it. Cole, somebody else did it recently. That's the same heel hook. Cola Bate did it at the Worlds, uh, and he won. Submitted the guy, same position. Um, somebody else sent me some. I can't remember who it was. I forget if it was Mika Gaval or somebody high level. So replicate the people that are most uh, at the highest level. And Colabate is the next superstar of the sport. He honestly is the next Gordon Ryan. But like this, right? We're here. And then this is how I left off in the last class. So let's pair both sides, okay? We're like this, right, on the first one. And I'm not going to, later on, I'll, re, I'll refine. Right now, I just want you to get patterns down and repetitions. You're like this. You flared. You dropped. I mean, here coming forward. I've collected kneecap, I flipped, right? Okay. Then on the second one, right? And if you're new to the class, let's just stick to one side, okay? I'm gonna challenge, because we have different levels of this. So I'm gonna challenge the other person to, that maybe has been here a bunch, uh, last couple of classes and has been drilling it to give me as many combinations as possible. I'm like this. I don't know how this is gonna play out. And then on the last one, I told you, I'll go this way if you guys want. I go like this, right? This is how I left off in the last class. I was having you do the leg lock in a different manner. As I go like this, right, and I pull, this hook stays. And they, he, he, it is what it is. He's heavy on my hooks, and I can't get rid of that hook. So I told you, don't worry about it. Instead, rock it your foot forward. And now my kneecap was in here, right? And now I have one position. How this plays out will have many different ways. Potentially, okay, before I go into the move that I'm going to show you, Potentially, I may drop this kneecap, and when I flare here, he's going to go to Z-guard, 
right? And as I'm coming like this, then I kick out and I pass him the other way, okay? Potentially, depending on how quick he drops that Z, right? Potentially, I drop this kneecap, and now when I butterfly, I realize I'm coming forward, and he's shrimping too hard, and I bring my kneecap out, and I slide sideways, right? Potentially. Potentially, I went on that drop also, I can come forward and now start playing a dominant half guard position on tripod. I'm not going to show it because I think everybody understands what I'm doing, right? So potentially, I could go a lot of different ways. Potentially, I may drop this, and now you think you're going to lock me up, and you're going to lock me low on this, and I'm like this trying to go into this knee slide, and now I'm going backstepping, and I'm going into those double troubles. You can play this a lot of different ways, a lot, right? Potentially, I, I don't want to keep, I'll keep going, right? And then we'll never get through the clock. There's like you get nine different combos in that center pocket, right? But now let's go to the move that we're going to show, right? Because every single one that I just showed, I never got a pin of this kneecap, of this ankle, right? So this is what I mean by it. I'm like this. We'll go slow. I'm going to like this, and I flare this leg high. I mean, to try to do the move I showed first, where this is the move I was going to show. Flared, no connection, drive forward, two combos on here. Right? I go like this and I flare hard and I go, oh darn, he's so tight on that hook, right? Um, the other day, I just want to point something out. The other day, somebody was trying to get rid of this and the guy was like up here in the air. That 99% of the time means that this is floating and it's easy to rock this this way, okay? But for whatever reason, this guy thought he had to give this guy a super duper defense. Also, I think it says something about you. Like, look, come on, man, let the guy work. He's just learning it for the first time. And you got this ego that you just want to show him, ah, no, no, you can't do this to me. I'll show you the defense. I know, dude, but I would have comboed you a different way. Like, so when you say you're defending it because your ego just took control of you, I, that's not the move then. Because then I show you a different combo. And the other day, somebody asked me, and I went like five combos deep because the guy was like, but then he did that. But that's not the move now. It's this move. And then he did that. That's not the move now. That's this move. That's where the chest game gets so deep, right? You're like this, and you're having on a heavy hook. And I drop this on this guy, okay? And I'll stay up for a second. As I'm coming through, because I never really wanted to play the center pocket, because the center pocket has issues that I got to go and cross more bells and whistles through the center because I don't know where my positions are up there. I can, up there, I have to have grabs. This way, I don't. So I would prefer, if I could, to, to once I drop this kneecap, to spin this and drive forward, right? But on this one, this is how now that I will start the class, okay? We're here like this, and I just drop. And as I'm coming through, as I drop my kneecap, I butterfly on his ankle. And we're like that, where I got a butterfly on this ankle, okay? So now, I know I have the pass because I'm not locked in here. So if you told me at any point, I don't like the look no matter what, he's backstepping, I have free movement of my outside leg. So at any point, there's no secondary grip on the back leg. I can always drop and backstep at any point. You can't tell me you can't. The only reason I can't is because, let stay right here, is because he's locked in this grip, this bottom grip, or he's locked in top grip some manner, whether it be on the outside, you know, you're like this, right? Or like this, right? Or standard Z guard. There's no reason. He doesn't have any of those things. So you can't tell me that you're going to get locked up. How this plays out on top, um, high level players will go to turtle right away because they're going to realize like, even if I go so high, I can still punch this pocket and now come back at a different angle. Like, come play this a lot of combos you know you're in trouble the moment I touch that, right? So what happens is you know you need this leg back because you have no gripping angle. So now you're pushing me with every, all of your might to make sure that I don't backstep on you because what you're trying to do is, the essence, when I stopped that class about uh, shrimping, and I said, that's the dumbest way, that I, it's so, so silly how the people learn how to shrimp all the way to one side and all the way to the back and never learn how to explode their hips up Think about him in this mechanical set right now. When I'm going to backstep, doesn't he want to get away from me as far out as possible? So I'm doing everything I can to make sure he doesn't. He's not shrimping this way. If he shrimps this way, we're going to marry each other up here. 
and he's exploding out that way. And I'm going, no, 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 no. And he's doing everything to push me down. And so I'm going, okay, my foot just came in, okay? Now he's got an issue because the moment I butterflied and remember the story and how it plays out because when you're in that spot, you're not going to recollect fast enough. So understand the story and absorb the story. I tell these stories for a reason because the game changes in quarter inches and then you're thinking this move and you're just going through the process and walking through life like, okay, I'm just going to repeat this and I can't wait to roll. No, man, absorb, understand the story. The stories are not just random because the game just changes in a quarter second. Now I have inside position and I'm like this. So it's easy for me to snake this guy in. And now as I fall back with this, I'm taking this leg. So my first reaction is I fall back and I throw over on the inside and now I finish. So understand, bottom players got to give you the right feed. Please do me a favor. You, to me, and I mean, not kidding, just me. He looks at you like you're a jackass. So you do want to look, you want to be thought of as a jackass in his eyes? I don't want to be thought that way, right? So try your best to feed your partner and don't do those things. Let them work because if you give them a defense and, a, and like any form of defense, the move's going to change another time. So you're not even letting your partner work. You're like this at this point, right? So I fed you three. You got three things to do, right? If you first time and you don't know the second one, don't do it. Let's stick to the first. So you're inside position. And if you're new to it, why don't we work both sides, right? Why don't we go inside position one way, right? Drive, pass, right? Inside position the other way, drive, pass, okay? Then on the second one, I'm like this. I'm first, I'm here, inside position. No, 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 stay right there. I'm not following it. Stay right there. I'm inside position, second one. But like this, I drive. I'm trying to come in. He shrimps hard. I come up with my kneecap, I fall back with my heel, okay? So that's, you're gonna ask him, the moment you got two behind one, you're gonna ask him to shrimp. Moment he shrimps, you're like this at this point. There you go. I'm like this, I've come in, he comes up, say, stay with me, stay with me. I want them to see it very slow. I'm like this, right? I've flared like this. I'm dropping two behind one. As I drop two behind, stay right there. What my goal was, was to come forward and collapse him and hold him so that I could take this leg, collect this kneecap and flip my hips. But as I'm doing that, he's shrimping out. So instead of picking this leg up, I pick the inside leg up. Okay, Lay, leave this leg down so people can see. He's shrimping. Before, when I landed, I was gonna do this. But I'm losing the hip line. It's coming out too fast. So instead of me going like this, he's shrimping, and I go, oh, shit, I'm about to lose this. I want to follow that hip. I'm inside position, I fall back, okay? If you've been here a bunch of times, but you have to have a good partner. If your partner is not good, and I, don't mean, I hate to say that, but your partner is so confused on how to feed you, don't do it. Don't, it's a waste of time. All you're going to do is reinforce bad habits. So if you've been with the same partner a bunch of times, then let's go to the third one. I'm like this. Okay, I went like this, I flared, follow me. I flared, I dropped, I come over and I'm like this. And now he's in, I'm driving forward and he's doing everything he can to shrimp. Okay, I can't move forward and I'm scared about losing him. Inside position or he came inside. I can always backstep this, right? Because we already agreed that we have no hooking. I'm in, I could take this so many different ways. If I don't like the look, I can knee slide through. I can hit a back step. If I get position here and I want the points, like I'm in a great spot to hit three combos right now, depending on how you turn right now. So I've got an inside position. He's pushing hard and he's shrimping hard. Okay, now we're back on the other leg, okay? But it's all relative if he takes the hip out. Okay, so you have three. If you've never done them before, get perfect one because the essence of the game is to get by, right? Don't worry about the legs. And in a street fight, you think we're falling back on legs, you've got to be crazy. I'm not going to sit on concrete, never know what happens. I want to be top player. So let's partner up and do it. That man asked a great question. I was going to take it in a different direction, but he asked a really great question. You know this guy, um, you're like this, and uh, we went two behind one, right? And then he, he just asked, it was a great question. So I'll address it. Put this out there. What I told you before is I've landed here like this and I wanted to put my leg up, but I realized that I'm losing the hip, right? My hand is here, 
right? Whether I'm looking this way, that's why I tell you, like, you have four limbs, and I want to feel every muscle twitch. I want to know, can I hold these? I would have loved, this is what I love to do. I want to put you to sleep. I want to sit back here. And for a long time, I looked at going back for a leg as a failure. I have had many names. They call me Matrix Mike, Killer Mike, Murder Mike. But at one time before all those names, they gave me the name Mikey Leg Locks. And I hated the name. I really hated the name. The only reason those leg locks would be true, only reason those leg locks kept going was Eddie. Because I thought the same thing was going to happen to him. And, but it didn't. Eddie's a fascination was so ridiculous with those legs because I got tired of the legs. I just got tired of them. It's like, it was too easy. It was just like, no one knew how to just get, and the moment I lacked them, they go like, I go, this isn't challenging, this is like boring. And I told people, I said, Eddie's gonna have the same thing happen, but he didn't. Eddie is brilliant. Eddie, you know, I give that guy a lot, Eddie is brilliant. There's, uh, there's a lot of great teachers. There's some that are exceptional regurgitators of moves. They see it and they regurgitate it perfectly. Eddie's a regurgitator and an innovator. That's rare that you ever find those. Eddie was both. That's very rare. That, that step on that drop, that was Ed. That was Eddie Cummings. So shout out to him, man. So I'm like this at this point. Um, so let's talk about this for a second. We're like this at this point. And now this will apply two different ways at this point. I'm like at this, right? And a young man just asked me a question. What leg comes inside like this? Is it this one that comes this way? Right? Or do I take this leg and throw it over this way? Right? Right? For people to understand, this is where I was. Stay right here. Come up for a second. I'm like this. I got in that position. we like this, right? I've landed two behind one, and I'm touching his hip. We, on both of them, the, I, we always said we got in front of this thigh. So that's where the storyline starts. If I have great position, and he's almost supine, why would I bring this inside leg up? I would be here, and he's almost supine. I know I'm going to collect this kneecap, right? But now he's so big and strong, I don't touch this leg. So if he is very good at shrimping, and that's why I'm so critical about those fake shrimps, because if he's built those muscles up off these toe lines, that hip is going to come out. It's almost like going with against a wrestler that's wrestled his whole life, all American. I've never seen men bridge so high. I've never seen somebody just not accept going to their back. Try to put that guy to the back. Yeah, we just went to Final X on uh, who represents us at the World Championship. I couldn't believe how some of these Greco guys, or the, even the freestyle, their bodies were so contorted that they're, they're sure he knows it. It was like, holy shit, man, I can't believe that guy's spine turns like that. Like, it was that crazy. But they wanted to make the world, the, the Olympic level athletes. I'm like this. Okay, so I know that if he's really, it's the same thing for BJJ. In wrestling, they can't put their back to the mat. Really high-level players condition that muscle and firing chain to explode those hips out. So I'm on this little crappy grip. I, I'm not going to hold this grip forever, right? And I really wanted this, and I realized I can't adjust these hands either. And you're doing this and shrimping off of this, I'm going to lose this hip. So I know if I'm going to, I can't go forward because I've encountered a stiffness up here that I can't collapse those arms. So I gotta deal with this leg because that's the first available sequence, okay? I'm like this, and if he's supine, if he was like this, then I could go here and go and come up and now pass him a different way. But he's taking the hip out. And if I go like this, and come, he's already thrown this leg over the top. So it's too late. So I'm like this at this point. It's gonna determine when I'm in here, when he, I'm like this, and now I realize I'm losing the hip, right? So I'm going to take this hand and catch the ankle. How it plays out later, I don't know. If the distance is great, then the outside, inside leg comes this way, right? Because if I'm super tight like this, right? And I realize he's shrimping, but this knee position's in tight. This guy, the bottom leg butterflies because I didn't want to lose the inside pocket. So as I fall back, the bottom leg is coming first. And now I'm finishing it like this, right? But he explodes it hard, right? And I'm going, damn. Only thing I had, this is what the sequence was, two behind one, and I brought this leg up, and I'm like this. And he explodes those hips. Why would I bring this leg now? He's gonna throw this guy in the middle. And now he's gonna separate me, and he's gonna kick me off with that leg. So this leg would throw over. 
because I don't want the, the, the essence of, of, take, of me, every one of the moves, every one of the moves, I don't care, whatever you want to tell me, inside and goggles, shadow, any of them. It's all based on the principle of this, that I've collected his kneecap, right? And my legs are somehow in between the other one. They're all the same, right? So when he first came out on me and he exploded out, I'm blocking that, but I never let go of this position. So now this guy comes over because I'm going to go on a rotation because he's going to roll and I'm going to break it on the second rotation. I'm going to break it from here because I know he's coming over, so I'm going to break it on the, on, the physical, on the second rotation. But we're like this at this point. And now we were here, two behind one, and I'm, I'm trying to hold this hip line, and I just encountered a tremendous, tremendous stiffness on top, and I'm going, shit, I'm about to lose this hip line. So my first reaction is to bring this kneecap up, but he hasn't left me yet. My safety valve, if he leaves, is to throw the inside one over. But I'm here, so my bottom leg just swivels. So as I fall, I protect my center pocket so that leg doesn't come through. I'm already on the other side, and now we finish it, okay? Let me just tell you one other thing, okay? You have to have a safety for all three. Otherwise, you're going to lose dominant position. I never want you to lose dominant position. You're on this man. You follow that man. You follow that man. I'd rather you, I don't care if you say to me, you didn't I finish. I never lost him. Once I got dominant position, if I got a chase for 15 minutes and the fight ended with me not submitting him, I'm okay with that. But I never lost my man, okay? Once I gain dominant position, I keep hunting. So I'm like this at this point. If for some reason everything leaves me, right? I was late here. I was late here, I was late here, I was late everywhere. You punch the pocket, okay? And you backstep hard. If I've lost everything, I didn't have anything, he shrimps hard, I punch the pocket right away because this guy's gonna come through. My secondary hand's coming over the top so that I can release this guy and collapse this guy. So my first reaction at this point is to maintain my position inside the hip side pocket and I backstep hard. How it plays out, 90% of the time, stay right there for me, I take this back. I actually, I believe this actually. 90% of the time he's inexperienced and he'll sit there and try to put these legs back in. Stay right there, no, stay right there. They'll try to put these legs back in. So my hand just comes up, I capture his elbow, and I can sit and take my time going left or right. Right? High level players, when you punch that pocket and hit that back step, they come in a turtle because they don't want to get dominated in a side control position or that elbow catch because they realize like, about to take control of you. So they punch the pocket and I backstep at this point and he's coming up, right? I capture his elbow, I drop his elbow and I go north south to attack Darcy's guillotines and I start attacking the top quadrant. Even though you're here, that's your objective now. That's your objective, okay? The moment you lose this inside pocket, this is your objective, nothing else. You went from here to here to this quadrant. And that's your chain of command. That's how you're going up that ladder. How it plays out later, I don't know. Maybe I capture this and I backstep it to a guillotine. Maybe I capture this and take this arm. Maybe I capture this and go into a back take. Chain of command though, right? I went dot, dot, lost this. Went ba, I'm backed up there now, okay? So let's go back, right? What time we got? We got five minutes, okay? We got five minutes. I'm asking you to drill as many reps as possible. Right? In the future, I want to change something. I won't do it today, but in the future, we're not going to go rep for rep. Because some people, and these are the people that I admire, they want to maximize their time. They don't want to do 10 reps. They want to see if they can get to 11 reps and 12 reps. It matters everything. They want to do a little bit more, a little bit more. But they got a partner that's just strolling through life. And he's taking his time to get up, and the other one's eager. I see it all the time. I know which ones you want to learn, and I know which ones just want to go through the motions and get their roles in. You go ahead. You do what you got to do, man. But I care about the ones that really care about the sport, right? Because so I'm going to change it. So you'll have a minute and a half. He has many repetitions in. And let me tell you something. If he does six, you should have the goal. I'm going to do seven. And if he does seven, you should have the goal. I'm going to do nine, dude. Whatever you do, I'm going to do more. We went to that Weedify event, and, uh, and we raised $40,000. We broke their record, smashed it here all power to you guys because you guys are a big part of that and we smashed it and we went to Delaware and uh, that guy I liked that guy the guy that owns that riverfront and he said man we had the record and I, I'm going to beat that record and I go beat what record he goes you did 40 I did 25 left 
And all I thought to myself, we walked out, I said, go ahead, bro, and kill your record. Whatever you think, I'm gonna crush it, I wanna double it. So don't, that's how you, everything is, right? So let's partner up. You can do any of the sequences. We got five minutes of drilling time. Let's maximize it. Let's